Hello and good evening. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Well, this time it'll probably be lunchtime when it's going out. But all the same, this is TCB MLS. Sit back and relax and enjoy. I hope ever to see America among the foremost nations of justice, liberty, and soccer. That was a quote by the first president of America, George Washington, appropriately adapted, of course, to fit a football podcast. Hello and welcome to the first TCB MLS podcast. TCB MLS is a new podcast that will be running alongside our main podcast. The podcast will be discussing news, results, and standing the standings in the MLS. And like the rules of the MLS, the upload schedule is a bit odd, with podcasts coming out once every three weeks. America, land of the NFL, the World Series, the NBA, and the NHL. A land not rich in football history, but a land with football history all the same, and a strong and growing passion for the beautiful game. The MLS has boasted talents such as David Beckham and Landon Donovan, but has also gained the unwanted reception of a reputation of being a retiring league for the top players, with names such as Andrea Pirlo, Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard, Kevin uh, Kaka, and Kevin Doyle retiring in the MLS. This podcast will hopefully not only improve my knowledge of the MLS, but hopefully improve your knowledge. But also, hopefully this will highlight the quality of the MLS and show how it's becoming not just a retirement league or it's kind of growing out of its reputation for being a retirement league, but actually becoming a league that has real talent and passion to match any leagues across the world. The MLS kicked off last week, but before we discuss any of the results, I shall explain the league structure, as I'm sure a lot of you are probably confused about how the league structure works, as with lots of sports in America, it can be a bit complicated. So this is a quick rundown of how things work. The MLS is comprised of 23 teams in two conferences. That's at the moment. They are looking to expand it further. I think two more teams could could potentially be joining the league, including a a Miami team um, run by David Beckham, of course. The Western Conference, which is one of the conferences, is based in the West, obviously, of America, and is comprised of 12 teams, including San Jose Earthquakes and the newly formed this season LAFC, who are a team managed by the ex-Swansea manager and the only manager to ever mem in manage in the Premier American manager to me- manage in the Premier League, Bob Bradley. And in the Eastern Conference, it's made up of 11 teams, which are of the likes of Atlanta United and Columbus Crew. There are also three Canadian teams that play in the MLS. Um, in each conference, respectively, Montreal Impact, Toronto FC, and Vancouver Whitecaps. The MLS has two potential trophies teams can win. The MLS Cup, which is like a playoff after the, the regular season, set up to decide the ultimate winner of the MLS, and the Supporters' Shield, which is like a trophy given to the teams with the most points between both conferences. The MLS Cup, though, is the most important cup, as it's a cup that decides who wins the MLS. All teams in both conferences play each other three times, at least one time home and away. The top two teams in each conference qualify for the semi-finals of the MLS Cup, and the next best four in each conference go through to a playoff kind of system to get to the semi-finals of the MLS Cup and then of course the semi-finals and then the finals and whoever wins the final is the MLS Cup champion and the winner of the MLS overall. I hope you are keeping up. I kind of am. I did write this explanation but it still gets me out every so often. (laughs) So also there is the US Open Cup which is kind of like the FA Cup equivalent in America And there is the Canadian Cup, which of course is the Canadian FA Cup, which includes teams that, Canadian teams that play in the MLS, and also teams that are Canadian that don't compete in the MLS, but I think they still actually compete in American football or soccer divisions. And of course, there's the North American Champions League, in which the USA team, 
Americans and Canadian teams compete against teams from the likes of Mexico and Costa Rica, which hopefully we will be able to talk about in the future. Uh, I hope things will become clearer as the podcast goes on because we'll be talking about kind of the league in itself and the the two conferences in which teams are in it. So hopefully it will become a bit clearer. But hopefully this um, this little um, explanation of how the league works has given you a good basis to go off and kind of have a good amount of knowledge. And now on to the MLS season ahead. This MLS season sees the introduction of more and more talent into the league, both young homegrown talent and foreign talents. The likes of Carlos Vela and Gregory Van de Ville are set to make their debuts in the league and it's going to be exciting for any person watching. The MLS did kick off last weekend and there was a few odd results. I mean, it started with a Sporting Kansas City loss to New York City at home 2-0 at the Children's Mercy Park due to a goal from the Paraguayan Jesus Medina getting a goal on his MLS debut and uh, his New York City debut. And also there was a goal from Maximilian Morales and Italian football fans might remember him for, for his time at Atalanta. The main shock were of the weekend and the f- opening week of MLS football was the fact that the newly formed LAFC, of course, as we discussed earlier, managed by Bob Bradley, got a shock away win against one of the most historic and most supported teams in the MLS, the Seattle Sounders. And of course, LAFC have only just been founded and this is their inaugural season and they get, got a 1-0 victory against one of the best teams in the league, helped to a solitary goal from Diego Rossi with an assist from Carlos Vela. Elsewhere, Houston Dynamo's got the biggest win of the round, winning 4-0 at home against Atalanta United. All of the results left Columbus Crew ahead in the Eastern Conference and Houston Dynamos leading both the Western Conference and the Supporters Shield in Week 1. But of course, it's too early to tell at the moment. The top scorers so far in the MLS were... were the joint scorers actually were Kevin Molino of Minnesota United who scored two goals in Minnesota's opening 3-2 loss against San Jose Earthquakes and Danny Huysen of San Jose Earthquakes, who also got two goals in that game. So that kind of rounds up week one of MLS. Um, There's not a lot we can talk about at the moment, because of course it's early in the season. So we hope you have, I hope you've enjoyed this this podcast. And if you want to hear more, please do kind of say you do, because I really want to do this podcast, and I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, Before we go, though, I've got one question, and that is, should we use the term soccer or football on this podcast, or should we just use it when relevant? Because I'm not sure whether I should start start saying soccer or football. And also, on another note, I used to live in America, in Wisconsin, so that's not really going to affect anything, really, because um, there's no teams in Wisconsin, football team, soccer, football, soccer, football teams in Wisconsin. But it just helps to know a bit of the culture, I guess. Um, but sadly, that's all we ty- have time for this week. Join us next time where we, we will be looking, what I will be looking at, the early leaders in the MLS, the results in the MLS, and we'll be de- delving into any news stories that crop up. Of course, if you want to get in contact with us with any questions about the MLS, you can get in to- contact via our email, which is thecommentarybox.contact at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at boxcommentary. Hope you have enjoyed the first podcast and I hope you are now encouraged to keep up to date with the MLS. Peace out.